Okay. So tonight we're going to talk about data storage, files. And it's important to remember that everything is a file on a computer, literally everything. Um, and up until this time, up until this week, we have always dealt with our, our code that is, well, the data that is that, that we put into a program is transient. That means it just goes away when you're done running the program. There's no way to store your data. Files are a way to store the data. And that opens up a whole new world to computer programming. When you can have the concept of a file and the ability to store things in a file, you can create things like books, electronic books. You can create databases of things. You can create programs like Microsoft Word, which is in itself a file. So um, all of this is, yeah, everything's a file. So we're going to have a new keyword this week, and it's called with. And with, we're going to talk about in a little bit, it's a special way of opening a file where you don't have to remember to close it. And I'll explain what all that means in a bit. We have some new functions. And these are just a couple. We have the function open, which is how you get your data, from how you access your file. You have the close function, which tells um, the tells Python to return the fun, the file descriptor, and a file descriptor is just what you use to get to the data in a file. And read reads all the contents of the file, and we'll also deal with read line. We'll look at things like comma separated values. We have two new concepts. We have a buffer, which is an intermediate storage area in memory. So writing to a disk is the most expensive thing you can do on a computer. Read-write operations cost a lot of processing. So the way that computers and also people and computer programs um, keep that from happening is that you buffer the data in a special place in memory. And then when that buffer gets full, you um, write it to disk. And then there's file descriptor. A file descriptor is the data about the file, the name of the file, how big the file is, what are the file permissions. That's all data about the file. And that is stored in a file descriptor. So what's a file? A file is everything on a computer system. That's basically what it is. Python interpreter is a file. All your .py files are files. PyCharm is a file. Anything, anytime you access a file, you, oper you interact with the operating system. So that may be starting up Microsoft Word as a program. It may be typing into PyCharm. Um, so all of those are interacting with the operating system. So what can you do with a file? Well, like I always say, CRUD. Create, read, update, and delete. That's what you can do with a file. Create tells the operating system to write a new file to the disk. Read gets the data from the file. Update, change the data stored in the file. And delete is remove the file. So we do CRUD, just like with um, lists and dictionaries and strings. It's, it all comes down to create, read, update, and delete. And if you know how to do those four things, you'll be able to manage your files really well. So a little bit about files in the operating system. And this is just uh, so that you're aware of this and you're also aware of the ability of Python to help with this problem. Um, how do I write? a program that will run on three different operating systems, that will run on Windows and Linux and Mac. And, and how, how do you do that? Because Windows handles files differently than Linux, and Linux is close to Mac, but it's not 100% Mac, and Windows and Mac are way far apart. 
So how do you how do you write one Python script that is going to be able to run on all of those operating systems because that's really what you want. It's one of the reasons we choose Python as a language because it's operating system agnostic. It's far enough away from the operating system that you don't have to worry about um, about writing specific code just for that operating system. But in some instances, it gets a little bit tricky because of how Windows and Linux and Mac handle files. So what is um, what are the file properties? File properties or metadata is the name, the size, the location on disk. Um, and it's contained in something called a file descriptor in Python. Now there's a little bit more to the, to the file metadata than just those th three things, but it's important, but we don't need to go into all those other ones. Right now these three are pretty much all you're going to need for this class. So I have a file called my first file. It's 28 bytes and it's in Home L Shannon. Um, and those are the properties. That's the metadata. That's the data about the file. And then there's the contents of the file. And this just says this is a file with two lines. That's all that's in there. So that's kind of a visual representation of the difference between the properties for the file and the actual contents. So how do you open a file? Well, the first thing you have to do is you have to get the file descriptor. You have to get a, um, a file descriptor is a system resource. And that system resource is finite. You can't, you know, there's, I think, in most modern operating systems, you can have about 65,000 of them and maybe more depending on the operating system. But when you open a file, you don't get the contents of the file you get a descriptor. You get what's called a file descriptor. And that is a way to get to the data of the file. You don't get the contents. You get like a bridge to the contents. And you've got to then walk over the bridge and grab some data and walk back across. So here I have a Python, the beginnings of a Python script. And I have a variable called my file. We know it's a variable. It's on the left-hand side of a single equal sign. That doesn't change. On the right-hand side of an equal sign, we have, we're going to use a function called open. Open takes two arguments, or can take two arguments. It takes the name of the file, and it takes how you want to open that file. So the name of the file, in this case, is myfirstfile.txt. And that, thought, that has to tell Python exactly where it is on disk. Now, if you're in PyCharm, you don't need, really need to worry about it too much. But if, when and if you go out into the wider programming world, what you're going to need to do is make sure that that has the directory structure and you know where it's going. Um, so it's the fully qualified path to the file. And then R is a mode. There are four modes, read, write, append, and binary. We're going to talk about read and write mostly in this lecture. We might, I don't remember if we touch on binary, if I have a slide on that or not. Um, and append. So, and those modes can be added together. So you can open a file for reading and writing. Or you can open a file for appending which means you're just going to add to the bottom of it. You can also open a file for, with, that's read-only, so you can't change the contents of the file. You can only get them out of the file. Now, once you've opened a file, you have to close it. You have to release that file descriptor back to the operating system, or you're going to use up all the file descriptors. So always remember to close if you do an open. And the other important thing about close, and some people have found this in their labs, is they forget to close and the files don't actually get written because of that buffer. Because um, the, the program ended 
before that buffer was flushed, and the buffer wasn't flushed because they didn't close the file. So if you're in Zybooks and you have an open, you have to have a close, or there's a possibility you're not going to get your credit for a working program simply because you didn't remember to close the file. Um, rule if it already exists in the location specified, Python will open it. If it doesn't exist in the location, Python will create it when using W or R. So it doesn't have to exist. If it does exist, great, then you can get the data out of it. If not, if you're opening it with W or R, it will create a new file. And always remember to close. I'm going to say that like 50 times in the next 45 minutes. So reading, let's see, does anybody ask any questions? Nope. OK, just checking. Reading data from a file all at once. So there are different ways you can read data from a file. If the file is small, you can just read it all at once. If the file is very big, you're not going to want to read it all at once. You are probably going to want to read that in chunks. Um, so OK. My file right now is not the contents of the file. It's a way to get to the contents of the file. To read the contents of a file, I have to use the read function. Now read, you'll notice, is, has a different notation than open. Open is a, just a function call, like print and input. Read is got that dot notation we've talked about in the past. Okay. So basically what read is, is read is saying, on the file descriptor called my file, get me all the contents of that file. So I have to tell read which file, I, which file descriptor to use to get the contents. So that's why we have myfile.read. It's that dot notation where you have to have the subject to the left of the dot. And then read just provides all the data. And it has to work with a file descriptor. So what will happen is it will read a string exactly for what's in the file. This is a text file with a new line with two lines. That's what myster will be. And then, of course, you want to close. Like I said, I'm going to be a broken record for the next 45 minutes. Read data from a file as a list. OK, you're going to have to do that tonight. You're going to have to do that for one of the labs. So my file is not the contents. It's simply a way to get to it. I said that before. But you want to retrieve the contents of a file as a list that's separated with a new line. So exact same file, exact same open command. You'll notice that that command did not change. What has changed? is the function that I'm using along with the file descriptor. So I have my file, which is the file descriptor. The line after that is my underscore list equal, and we know my underscore list is a variable, my file dot read lines. So what this will do is this will automatically create a list. It's almost like a split for a string. It will create a list using new line as the delimiter. So what will happen is you will get a list with this is a file as element 0 with two lines as element 1. So that's what read lines does. And there are a whole host of ways to read things out of a file. We only just touched the surface in this class. So and as always, close. Um, so there's also a way to read it line by line using a loop. So, and, and any of these is a valid way to read a file. It all depends on what the needs of the program are. Um, if you're going to be working with a list 
and the file is delimited by new lines, then just read, do read lines and you'll get your list. And we'll talk a little bit more about this when we start to talk about the labs. Because, and I have to apologize, the labs for uh, Zybooks, even though there are only two, they're big. And I apologize because they are, um, yeah, because you have your project due this week as well. So this is how you read it line by line. And again, a line is a new line character. So basically I've got the file descriptor and now I'm just going to use a for loop. For line, and line is just a variable, it's a local variable for this particular for loop in my file. And then I'm going to print the line. So I can just use a for loop to read it as long as it is separated by new lines. And what this is going to do, the first line, it's going to say this is a file. I'm going to go back up to the for loop. We're going to get another line from the file. And then it's going to say with two lines. So those are three different ways you can use to read a file. And then, of course, you always have to close it. OK. Um, OK, I'll just say it again. File descriptor is a system resource. There's only so many to go around. Um, you need to manage your file descriptors. Not as much in this class, but when you are out in the programming world, you need to manage your system resources properly. Um, open gets you the file descriptor. Close returns the descriptor, but it also ensures that there's no data left in that buffer. And um, so it makes sure, especially for the labs, that any data you have has been written to the file properly. Um, and the file no longer object is no longer connected to the file. So if you tried to use my file after close, you would get an error. OK, writing to a file. So I have a file. I'm going to open my empty file.txt for writing. That's what the W means. And now I'm going to write line one. And you'll notice I've got this little blue thing called a buffer. That's because it hasn't written to disk yet. And then I'm going to write line two. And then I can write as many as I want. And then when I close, I actually write it to the hard drive. I actually do that expensive write operation on close. Um, to open a file for reading and writing, use R comma W. Because that's probably, well, I think you've got to do that in a lab. OK, writing to a file before close. Actually, let me stop this for a minute. And let us look at, um, I just went over that. Oh. We'll, do a, we'll go over this in just a minute because this is for one of your labs. So let me, let me keep going with the lecture part of it and then I'll show you this for one of your labs because it's a little tricky. Okay, writing to a file before close. So I want to create a huge, I've got a huge text file I'm going to create. I am writing the next great massive manuscript, whatever it is. And I don't want to wait for, I don't want to wait to, to you know, um, save everything's disk while I'm doing my thing. So what I can do is called flush. So I've created a big file. I'm just writing a big file with line. And every 10 lines, I'm going to do something called flush. And what flush does is it basically tells Python, write to disk now. Clear out anything you've got in the buffer, clear it out, write it to disk. So you don't have to remember always to close if you have a very large file. 
and that will just write it to disk. And then it's a good to close because you still got stuff in there and you need to return the file descriptor. And then, yeah, we write it again. Yeah, if you're dealing with large data sets, remember to flush. Okay, so I just told you every time you open a file, you got to close it. But there's a, a way where you don't actually have to call close. This is our new keyword, with. Um, it is a loop that is made specifically for files. And it will automatically close the loop when you're done. So this is, this is like any other loop. The loop behavior is pretty much the same, except it works exclusively on files. So what you'll have is you'll have the with keyword, and then you're going to have that open statement. Just like we saw on the previous slides, I'm going to open a file. I've got to give it the fully qualified name to the file, whatever that is, and then as my file. So as in this case is a keyword, and my file is the variable to be used within the local scope of this loop. And it, by the way, my file will only be available in the local scope of the loop. So I'm going to say line equal my file dot read line, and then I'm going to print the line. And then I'm going to go back up to the top of the loop, and I'm going to print line two. And then I, it closes automatically after exiting the with loop. So oftentimes what you want to do when you're, when you're dealing with a file that you're going to read, is you're going to define a variable outside the width, like a list, to hold the information. And then you're going to say width open as my file, and you're going to do something to the file inside that width loop. And then when it exits the loop, you'll have your list or whatever it is that you read from the file in a variable that's defined before the loop. Um, run will process the file until reaching the very end of the file. That's where it will stop. And it automatically closes, and width is a loop, but it's only for files. This is just a quick talk about working with the operating system. I mentioned that there are differences in Windows and Linux. Um, and this is you don't even need to worry about this for labs. Python has the ability to neutralize the difference in operating systems for you. It has libraries that are called modules. Oh, sorry. Next topic. Python has modules, and these modules have functions. And the module to interact with the operating system is called the OS module. So you would import, oh, what am I doing? OK. So you would import OS. Import is a keyword. We talked about modules. Well, but Zybooks talked about modules, I think, in, in week one. But um, OS makes some of the file handling throughout the different systems easier. So it, again, you can write one Python script and run it wherever there is a Python interpreter. So an OS gives us lots of things. I use OS a lot when I have to go out. Um, I often write scripts to kind of automate some processing that I have to do when we're preparing builds and stuff like that. I use OS a lot of the time to go out and, you know, say, is this a file? Is this a directory? Is this whatever? And it will tell me based on the file descriptor that it has. It will go out and check that file descriptor and then come back. So that's what I use OS a lot for. But import is the keyword, and OS is the name of the module. You can look at import like you're actually copying a whole block of code into the computer memory, because that's kind of what you are doing. And then all of the stuff in that module is available to you. You didn't have to write it. You didn't have to test it. You just get it, and a lot of these modules are already included with Python. And then there's a lot of modules. There's, you know, gobs and gobs of models 
modules that aren't, but you can just download and install them. So let's say I wanted to create a file path for home L Shannon module six lecture dot key. But I don't want to say have the slash one way because then it's a Linux or if I have the slash the other way then it's Windows. So what I can do is I can use the OS module and I can say os.join and join all these directory names together all the way down to the file and Python will figure out what the operating system is and what those slashes have to look like. Um, and so this is just one example of how to use the OS module, but this is what they kind of talk about in Zybook. So, so in Linux, you would have something that looks like this, and in Windows, you would have, have something that looks like that. Um, and it is simply because you use the OS module and Python can go out and tell you what's happening with the operating system or what kind of operating system it is. Binary data, and this is just to give you an example of binary data. Most of the data in a file is not human readable. I mean, it's not like a text file. Um, if you actually tried to, as a text file, open a Microsoft Word document, it would look like gobbledygook and wingdings. Um, and imagery, movies, audio, those MP4 files that you store or whatever kind of um, audio files you listen to are, if you open them up, they're not going to be human readable. They're just going to be a lot of gobbledygook on the screen because um, they're stored in binary format. And binary format is just a way, a, a way to compact and store data. And then it takes special programs to read and do something with that data. For a Microsoft Office document, of course, we have Microsoft Office um, programs. For imagery, you have to have something that understands that imagery format. You know, you have to have a, um, a, a photo editor or an image editor of some kind. Movies, you have to have a program that opens those movies. And just like with, and the same with your audio files. You have to have a special program that understands how to open, read, and do something with those audio files. So, and I just, this is just a quick introduction to binary. And it's just so that you guys can understand that not everything is human readable. And this is just a quick binary file example. And what you do to make something binary is you put a B in front of it. The B is not in quotes. The B is outside the quotes, and it's a modifier to say, hey, Python, I have binary here. And, um, but there's a whole lot more. This just touches on it. Uh, and by the way, if I print my bytes, sorry. So I can print my bytes, and it will print bytes. And it will, if I print type my bytes, it will print out that it's a binary type. OK. Now to something that is more relevant to our labs, comma-separated value files. So a lot of data is organized to comma-separated value files. And um, what is a CSV format? A CSV format is. A, a row, the row has individual, um, individual data elements separated by commas, and then you'll have another row, individual data elements separated by commas, and so forth, and so on. So this is where you're going to use the CSV module, because it can help process files that are in CSV format. And this is for Lab 7.8 specifically. OK, so I have a comma-separated value file. And I want to create a list from the contents of word.csv and remove the duplicate words as you build the list. And we'll look at comma delimited in a second. So I'm going to import something called CSV. CSV is a module. You just get it. You just tell Python, hey, copy all that CSV 
copy all that the ability to process CSV into my memory space. Now I'm going to create a list called word underscore list and I'm going to create an empty list. I just want that memory space out there so that Python knows word list is a list. And then I'm going to say with open words.csv, that's just the name of the file, as words. And then I'm going to have content equals CSV reader words with a delimiter comma. So I'm using the reader function from the CSV module and that's what this particular dot notation is. CSV there is the module name. Dot reader is a function inside the CSV module and that's how Python knows where to get that reader function because you're saying from C CSV get the reader function and use words and, and then the words are coming over as each individual line and the delimiter for my comma separated value file will be a comma. And then I'm going to say for row in content, this is just a normal for loop, but content is in fact, um, sorry, in case there are multiple lines in the file, we're going to do for row in content, and then I'm going to say for counter in range length of row. So I just want to make sure that, um, that I don't overstep the range of the row. And then I'm going to say for counter, for row counter not in word list. Um, make sure the word is not already in the list. And then append the word, append what's that row counter to the word list. So let's do that again. We've imported CSV because we're going to use that to read the CSV file. I have created um, a variable outside of my with loop because I want to hold on to that when the with loop finishes. I'm going to open words.csv as words, so words is my file descriptor. I have a variable called content, which is just going to get me all the content in a comma, sep a comma delimited form. Um, sorry, in a, in a, it will be rows and each row will have commas, will have comma delimited content. And so I'm going to say for row and content and then for counter in range length of row. So I just want to make sure that I don't go over the number of elements in a row. And I'm going to say for row at counter, if, it's, if row at counter is not in the word list, we know word list is a list because we created it as an empty list, then I'm going to append it. And I'm going to keep doing this until everything's done. And then when I'm all done, I'm going to print word list. So that is how you're going to read the CSV file. So let's look at comma delimited.py. Uh, comma delimited. Okay, so I have here, oops, come on. Okay, let's try this again. There we go. Just trying to make it a little bigger. I don't know why it keeps doing that. Okay, we're just going to leave it like that. So we're going to run through this so you can actually see what's happening. First, I have a colon delimited dot tx to dot text file. And then um, words, 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 words dot csv. Here's words dot csv, okay? So cat in the hat, hat in the hand, that's row one. And then row two is, sorry, I'm drawing a blank blank. It is, whatever that is. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step through comma separated by debugging, because we all know that's my favorite thing. So I'm here on line five. And it opened, wait a minute, that's colon delimited. 
my bad. Let's go to comma separated.py. We'll walk through this, and then for the next one, I'll show you about the colon one. So, why does it keep doing that? All right, that's why it keeps doing that. Comma separated. It helps when I actually tell it to run the right program. So, I'm here. I'm going to open words.csv as words. So, let's see what happens down here in the debugger. All right, I now have this words equals text.io wrapper. The name is words.csv. I'm opening it with a mode R, and it's going to be UTF-8. So this is all the metadata it gives me about this function, about this file. Um, you don't really need to worry about it. I just wanted to show it to you. So now I'm going to step over, and now I have this thing called content. Now content is not a string. Content is a CSV reader object. So it is keeping track of what I'm doing, but in, a, in, in, in its own object. You won't see a string in here. But when I say for row in content, and I look at row, row now is in fact a list. That is what the CSV reader has done for me. It has taken that whole row and it has given it to me as a list. I didn't have to do anything special other than using the CSV functionality. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to say for row in range length counter of row. So I'm just going to keep going through each row. And the word list is going to get longer as long as I haven't put words in there. Already put the word in there. So uh, let me run through this. Oh, and I'm, I'm already on the second row, sorry. So the second row, sorry, I'm drawing a blank blank. It is. And I'm going to keep going through that until I have a list that contains only unique words. So this is what you do for 7.8, or this is some of what you do for 7.8. And this is will be up on the YouTube channel. Oops. OK. So this is needed for 7.9. This is list to a dictionary. Okay, the contents of dict.txt contains key value pairs. Unfortunately, the key is stored on a different line as the value. For example, the key is the first line and the file and the value is the second line. Creating a dictionary from this file and print it out in the format key value. So what we have here is we have these contents. And um, for this example, we're just going to use a list, but it's the same processing. If you read it out of the file as a list, you're here. So we have contents. Contents is fine. And then I'm going to create an empty dictionary called MyDict. And then for counter in range len contents, here's my contents. And then I'm going to say, what I need to do is I need to do every, I need to uh, count, but I need to do every other, um, every other element in contents. So when I start at contents, the first value is going to be a key, and the second value is going to be a value. The third element is going to be a key, and the fourth element is going to be a value, the fifth element is going to be a key, and the sixth element is going to be a value. So now how do you set that up? You set that up saying if counter plus one is less than the length of the contents and counter modulo two is zero, so I'm on an even, and I won't walk off the end of the list because of the counter plus one less than len contents, then I know I can process a key value pair. So I'm going to have contents of counter is not in my dict. 
so I don't already have a key. Then I can say my underscore dict of contents of counter, so it will be either this one, this one, or this one, equal contents of counter plus one. And then I say for key in my dict, and then I print out the key value pairs. So this is how you go from a list to a dictionary. You have to manage what you're getting when. So you have to know that at zero, you're getting a key, at one, you're getting a value. And you can do that by understanding that there are two criteria. It has to be even, which is where the counter modulo two equal equal zero comes in. And you have to make sure that where you are plus one is less than the length of the total length of the list. Because if not, then you're off with your count and you're going to walk off and get um, at a, um, an exception in PyCharm, in Python. Uh, do I have this one in a script? Uh, to dict. Yes. So this is in to dict.py. So this will help you understand how to go from a list to a dictionary. Because when you read in the file for 7.9, you're reading it in as a list. And then you need to go to a dictionary, and then you need to do some things to the dictionary, and then you need to write it out, and then you need to write something else out. So there's a lot going on in 7.9. Whoops, sorry about that. So let's talk about word frequencies. We just looked at um, a similar program, but this says write a program that first reads in the name of an input file and then reads the file using the CSV reader. So we saw how to do that. And when it says that first reads in the name of an input file, that's just an input statement because Zybox is going to send you in a string and that string is simply the name of the file. The file contains a list of words separated by commas. Okay. Your program should output the words and their frequencies, the number of times each word appears in the file without any duplicates. So you want to make sure that you only recognize a word once and that you get the number of times. So what you want to do here is you're going to import CSV. Don't forget that step or you won't be able to use the CSV reader. You're going to um, have an input statement for the file name. You're going to create an empty word list. What you're going to do then is you're going to open the file name for reading. Now there are two lines here that are in a box and those two lines are because pseudocode is language agnostic. But those two line me, lines mean use the with statement. That's why they're in that box with the little bubble. Um, set a variable equal to the results of the CSV reader, making sure you're using comma delimited. And then because we don't know if there are multiple rows in the file, PyCharm could, or Zybooks could do that. For row in user file, so now I'm doing what I did in that example earlier, if the value of the row at index is not in the word list, then output the value of the row at index and the value at row count of index, and then append the value um, of the row at index word list. That's what you do. It's very, very similar to what uh, um, to this. It's very similar. You just have to make sure that you're outputting the, the information in the correct place, but this will get you started. Okay, 7.9 is the big one. There's a lot going on here. So we're going to write a program that first reads in the name of an input file and then reads the input file using file.readline. So you do not need the CSV reader here. You're just going to read all the lines of the file into a list with each line 
with, with each line being its own element in the list. Um, the, this, the input file contains an unsorted list of number of seasons followed by the corresponding TV show. So this is line one is the, um, is the number of seasons and line two is the corresponding TV show. Your program should put the contents of the input file into a dictionary where the number of seasons are the keys and, the, and a list of TV shows are the values. So this is going to be a little different because you're going to have a key and then a list of TV shows. Then you're going to have to do some sorting. So you've already read it in and you've gotten your dictionary. So now you've got to sort it by key, least to greatest, and output the results to a file named output underscore keys.txt. Separating multiple TV shows associated with the same key with a semicolon. Okay. Next, sort the dictionary by value, alphabetical order, and output the results to a file named output titles.txt. So that one you only have the titles. So We've got some variables we have to define. They're going to give you a file name. Um, you're going to open the file. And um, then you're going to do the read lines. And you're going to get a list from read lines. Now it's how you process the list. You're going to create an empty dictionary. You're going to create a list of shows and uh, show lists split to, and those are all, those two are empty lists. Okay. Starting from the first item in the list, add every other item in the list as a key, and every value in between is the value associated with the preceding key. If one key with multiple values append to, if one key with multiple values append to the list. So, for index and length of output, so I'm just going through this output list. And I'm going to create a temporary list because I don't know what has to ha I don't know what how many shows there are potentially going to be. I'm going to set my list object equal to output list index where new line has been removed. So, creating a new string from an existing string to get rid of the new line, you might have to do a strip. And that's from module 2. If index plus one, so this is that check we did before. If index plus one is less than the length of the output and index modulo two is equivalent to zero, you know you're safe to proceed. So we're going to convert a list, the list object to an integer because this is the number of seasons. And then if list object is already in the dictionary, remove line from output list, remove the new line from the output list plus index one, and append the output list at index to the dictionary of the list object. So this is if it's already there. What you want to do is you want to take and add it to a list. So instead of, um, sorry, you have a key and your value is always going to be a list. And that list is whatever the t name of the shows that have that key. So you could already have had that key. Let's say it went on for five seasons. Well, maybe you have three shows that went on for five seasons. If five is the key, the value is going to be a list, and you're going to append that show name to the end of the list that is the value for the dictionary. Otherwise, you got to make sure you remove the new line, and then you're going to basically set, basically create a a, um, a key, and then you're going to have the value, which is going to be in a list, and that list in this is just called temp list. So now we go to the next page. So now we've read everything in, and we have our key value pairs. So remember, our key is the number of seasons, and our value is a list of show names for, that, for those seasons. So now 
I am going to um, sort the dictionary. I'm going to set, I, so I have to create a new dictionary. And then I'm going to um, sorry, set my dick sorted keys to new dick populated sorted keys. So I'm going to create a dictionary that I'm going to populate with the sorted dictionary keys. Now I have to change the dictionary to a list and I'm going to just use the keys. So I'm going to say for x in keys of my dict dot keys. That's where you want to get the keys from. Append to show to show list. And then I'm going to split the list of lists into a single list. I know this is kind of crazy. So now we're flattening the list. And then we're going to sort the output. Um, and then I'm going to open a file for writing and then I'm going to for the key value pairs I'm going to make sure that I um, write key and then colon to the file and then for every item in the list in the value that list I'm going to have item plus semicolon to file. And I make sure that I don't add that semicolon after the last, um, the last show title, and then I'm going to close the file. That's the first file you have to write. And then the second file you're going to be writing is just the titles. So I'm basically going to go into show list split and write each item to file two and then close it because that's what show list split is it is just the name of the files or sorry the titles this is long and for those people who listen to this and who are in my class get your project done first because that's the most points and then come back and do this remember it'll only be a small deduction if this doesn't get done until week eight so the higher points are for the project, so get your project done first. Um, okay, I think I'm done. Any questions, Stephanie? And thanks for hanging around. No questions, thank you. Sorry? I have no questions, but thank you. Then have a very good evening. I'm going to stop the recording.